Hi everyone, Anthony Papillon here, and if you follow my blog, you know that I've already posted a review of Safari for Windows. For those of you who don't know what Safari is, Safari is an Apple web browser. It is a preeminent web browser on the Apple Macintosh. Um, in fact, it's one of the best known and best loved web browsers in the industry. Um, unfortunately, up until now, it would only run on the Mac OS. Um, as of yesterday, Steve Jobs announced at the Worldwide Developer Conference that they were releasing Fire, uh, Safari for Windows, um, which was met with wild, wild, wild enthusiasm. Um, everybody loved Safari on Mac, and everybody was really hopefully, or looking forward to a very hopeful experience on the PC. Unfortunately, if you've read my blog article, you know that's not really the case, and we're going to discuss why that's not the case um, in this short video. I'll try to keep it short and sweet and just kind of simple, but um, I'm also hoping to give you a full view of what Safari um, is like, what its positives are, and what its negatives are, and let you make a decision on your own. So let's bring up the Google homepage in Safari. Um, there it is there. You'll notice first of all that Safari is not a striking Windows application. It's not a beautiful application. Um, in fact, it doesn't even look like a Windows application at all, and that's because it's not. One of the things that Apple tends to do when it releases software for Windows is it keeps the familiar Mac look and feel. Now, I don't know if Safari is running on a Mac emulation layer or if it's just that they've, they've kept the same look and feel but it just doesn't look or feel like a Windows application. It doesn't feel modern, it doesn't feel slick, um, it just feels kind of kind of there and kind of blah. Um, you'll notice an unfamiliar set of icons here. If you were pointing to some of these icons, you may not even know what they do. Like, I would not know that this icon here will take me to my home page, and hovering over it does not give me a tooltip like other browsers do. Um, I'm kind of just left to wonder what it does and um, and why it does it. Um, same thing with this. You really don't know what this plus sign does. Does it add a bookmark? Does it advance a page? Does it you know, go back a page? What does it do? Apple totally missed the ball on that. They, they really should have designed a more Windows-like user interface for their web browser if they expected Windows users to feel comfortable with it. Now, Mac users are going to love it. Mac users who are also Windows users are going to feel right at home. Um, they're going to know exactly what everything, where everything falls, what everything does, um, and it's not going to be a problem at all. Windows users are in for a little bit of a learning curve. Now, let's look at the same Google interface on the Firefox web browser. You'll notice that Firefox looks like a Windows application. It looks like a good Windows application. You hover over something, you get a tooltip telling you what it is. Um, very, very flashy and, uh, and sleek interface. Um, it just looks like a modern Windows application. So in terms of look and feel, uh, for Windows users, Firefox wins, Internet Explorer wins, even Opera wins. Um, unfortunately, Safari just doesn't look like a modern Windows application. Now, the second thing we want to look at is speed. Let's go to a web page and let's see how quick each browser loads uh, that web page. For this case, let's try the... Uh, slash dot website. So we're going to type HTTP www.slash dot dot com. And you'll notice that Safari has very little trouble loading and rendering it. It's right there pretty quickly. And uh, let's try that on Firefox. And you'll notice Firefox has very little trouble rendering it and loading it and it comes up almost as quickly. As far as wind rendering goes, as our web rendering goes, both browsers do an excellent job. You'll notice there's very, very little um, problems with the way the web page looks in either uh, Safari or Firefox. Same is true with Internet Explorer. They all do a decent job at rendering web pages. Now, the one thing that I complain about in Safari, that, and I believe a lot of users complain about, is the font, uh, the look and feel of the fonts in Safari. You will notice that in the Safari web browser, everything looks bold and that not necessarily is a, that's not necessarily a shortcoming of the web browser I think it's something that Apple tends to do on the Mac platform in general and so you'll notice everything looks bold here and whenever you hover over something it doesn't look bolder it just kinda looks like you're hovering over it um, it makes it hard to read um, it makes it look a little bit confusing I mean is the web page user or is the web page creator uh, bolding something on purpose or you know, is it just something that Safari is doing? Um, is it just a quirk? So I think they dropped the ball on that too. Um, we can go back to uh, Firefox, and you can see here that things are not bold. Whenever you highlight something, you know you're highlighting it because it looks a little bit different. Um, so it looks a little bit you know better. 
Um, so really, on, on the, the visual front, um, Safari loses there as well. Now, one other thing about the Safari visual is that you will, uh, you'll notice that, the, that it looks a little bit blurry. And I, I don't know if you can really see it in the screencast um, because it's such a smaller, um, smaller image. But if you're looking at Safari on the screen, it tends to look a little bit blurry. The, the text tends to look blurry. And that's because of the anti-aliasing that doesn't happen in Safari that happens in other browsers. The fonts are not smooth like they should, and so the edges are a little bit less clear, and it makes it really feel like you're like you're uh, looking at a blurry web page, and it, it can kind of play tricks on your on your eyes, and it can kind of make for a really uncomfortable browsing experience. Now, that said, um, I think those are the main UI problems or user interface problems with Safari. Other than that, it's a really good browser. It's got built-in um, RSS syndication, which allows you to read blogs and keep track of blogs and stuff like that right in the browser. Um, Firefox, unfortunately, doesn't have that yet. Um, and it's got everything you'd expect in a modern web browser. Now, that said, I believe there are a couple of problems that need to be addressed by Apple, and I'm sure they are because it's going to be a um, it's going to be a, uh, a an ongoing beta. One is stability. After I installed Safari, um, I went to three different websites. On two occasions, the browser crashed on me, and on one occasion, it just wouldn't load at all, and it froze my computer, eating up the whole one gigabyte of RAM um, that I have on my laptop. So that's got to be worked on if Apple really wants Safari to take off. Other than that, I think it's going to be a good web browser. I'm looking forward to seeing what Apple has in store for us. I'm looking forward to seeing where this is going to go. Um, but right now, I really don't see any reason to switch from Internet Explorer or Firefox or, um, or um, Opera, any of the other browsers you might be using, um, in exchange for Safari, unless you're a Mac user. If you're already a Mac user, Safari is going to by far give you the most consistent user interface and experience, and it's definitely worth the switch. But for my money, I'm staying with Firefox now and for the foreseeable future, and um, I do hope to see what I, I'm excited to see what Apple is going to be offering. Um, just can't wait to see, really, because Apple's a really innovative company. Um, but right now, right now, Safari is just not where it needs to be. So that's my take on it.